first part of the build video is going to be on. Uh, this is just a chain coil V2, um, made just like the chain coil, except that you just twist the initial strands more and then you reverse twist them a little bit more than you normally would. And it works really well, it wicks um, substantially better than the first chain coil that I did a video on, and no flattening required on this one. Here's firing up at 4 volts. Looks like I have a little unevenness in there, but it gives you the idea. And it looks pretty neat. It makes a triangle shape with the wire, uh, which you'll be able to see a little bit later in the video. Uh, but definitely produces a really nice uh, flavorful vape. Let's go ahead and show the interlock coil next. This is the interlock coil. Um, it's the same wire that you just saw in the macro shot on that other coil. Uh, the difference being that this one is flattened with toothless pliers and a drill. And so, um, this one's pretty worn out already. You can see the discoloration in the nichrome because uh, I've been using it for about two weeks solid here. Um, fires up pretty much in just the same way as the other one. Um, but the added flattening um, increases the surface area a little bit and makes those twists more compact. And I'm gonna let this cool down. I'm gonna put some juice on this just so you can see what it does with juice. It's pretty uh, impressive um, the way that it just holds on to the juice. Hold on a second. Okay, I got it cooled down. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little juice on here. and it just absorbs straight across the whole coil there just by putting it on that one side. Soaks right in and it holds a lot. And so you end up with really even vapor production. Um, very rich flavor. Yeah, I mean that's a basic introduction. If you wanted to do this interlock coil, uh, I would it's highly recommend it that you have an ultrasonic cleaner, and you'll see why later. If you don't have an ultrasonic cleaner, I recommend just not even uh, messing with this part of the build. You could just do chain coil V2. It's just as good of a vape, and it doesn't require all this extra machine. Okay, guys, I have a build video today. It's a uh... The first part is going to be chain coil V2, which is just like the chain coil I did before, but you just twist it up a lot more in the drill before you do the reverse twists. And the other coil I'm going to do is the interlock coil, um, and on that one, I wouldn't recommend doing that unless you have like an ultrasonic cleaner to really get the wire thoroughly cleaned. Um, it's going to be quite a process, really heavily machined wire, and I personally don't feel comfortable vaping it without throwing it through an ultrasonic cleaner. So, um, I'll go ahead and start out with the chain coil V2, um, which is neat wire. It turns, it becomes like a triangle shape when you twist it up to a certain point. And so, I'm going to fire both of these at 120 watts, a dual coil metering at like 0.16 at both of them. Um, put some juice on here. It's really, both of them really warm, flavorful vape. Uh, they keep up well with wicking. The reason with the chain coil, like the only issue I had with it um, was that if you use too large a gauge of wire, it creates a big distance between the wick itself and the outside of the coil. So I feel like the outside of that coil is getting a little bit too hot. Um, like the e-liquid will break down once it gets up to a certain temperature into some other components which aren't necessarily healthy to be inhaling. So um, what I like about this 
chain coil V2 is that you can use a larger gauge as a wire and it pulls it really compact together and creates these uh, pretty interesting wicking effects which keeps the entire coil saturated with juice while you're firing it up which the wetter it is the cooler it's going to be while you're vaping it and in my opinion uh, I haven't done any tests on it obviously but in my opinion the uh, has a better chance of keeping that temperature at safer levels So this is um, not flattened or anything. This is the first one you saw in that macro shot at the beginning. And it's really warm, nice, flavorful vape. It's a good vape for sure. Um, in my opinion, with a larger gauge wire, it's a better vape than the first chain coil. Um, with the first chain coil, that's why I went with a 30 gauge nichrome just so that um, it would be closer in proximity to that wick, have a better chance to uh, get juiced up while you're firing it up. And then the interlock coil, I notice a little bit more even vapor production off of it, and the flavor is slightly better on point. And I hate even saying that I like it better because I know the majority of people don't have uh, like ultrasonic jewelry cleaners at their disposal. But I bought one at Harbor Freight. It was like around $35, I think. Um, and it comes in handy for cleaning atomizers and stuff like that. So um, it's a nice little tool to have. It's not super expensive from Harbor Freight. I'm sure they have an online store if you don't have one locally. Um, I'll probably put a link for that down in the description. Uh, but this is that one also at 120 watts. Yeah, I like this significantly better um, than the, the other way without the flattening. I think it increases the wicking capabilities of the wire and also compresses it down together to more of a... Um, to more of a compact shape. And I've been messing around with some other variations of this. I've seen already... I just posted these pictures on Instagram uh, and Facebook and I've already seen a lot of people reproducing them. And they've tried different variations. Like, I don't have time to do all the different variations, so I'm going to try something here. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to work out at the end, but I'm going to put a hashtag down here across the bottom of the screen. Um, if you guys have chance or time, please try some different variations with multiple strands of twisted wire, different size twisted wires, add some ribbon wire in there, I don't know. And let's see if we can't figure out something, because this is a great vape just with the two strands of 26 gauge. But... Um, I think that there's something that can be done that's uh, going to be even better. So I don't have time to do it myself. Hopefully we can get some sort of group project going here and um, see what we can do. And yeah, I don't know if how it's going to work out or how it's going to be possible to test it, but um, hopefully we can start getting some people beta testing some different concepts with this. We find a really good vape out of it. And especially with the, I bet there's a combination of wire for just the, not flattened um, with the pliers, but just twisted up. I bet there's a combination of wires that would create a really good vape without going through all that extra work of flattening the wire and cleaning it and all that jazz. So, I uh, hope you enjoy the build video. I'm not sure how long it'll be, but I should have a timestamp down below to help you jump around if you're so inclined to do so. That's about it. Okay, we're gonna need some things for this build. Uh, 26 gauge wire, either Nichrome 80, Nichrome 60, Canthal, it's all gonna work the same. Obviously the Nichrome is gonna have lower resistance, which will cut down on ramp up time if you're using an unregulated device. You're gonna need a drill, as most of my build videos just need. You need something to wrap your coil on. I like a 332nd inch uh, inner diameter on my coils some clippers, and some pliers. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is take out three sections of this 26 gauge. One, two, three. Go ahead and clip it off. 
And I'm going to clip off this other end that's a little uneven. And then what you can do is get these, both of these straight ends uh, as parallel as you can. And on these drills that have three sections, three different sections in the chuck, um, what you can do is get these two wires straight right on top of one of those little triangular shapes so that when you tighten down the chuck um, it's going to come down and put pressure on both sides there and crimp that wire nice and tight right into place both of them and I'm going to tighten it down and then pull on them make sure that you got a good uh, solid connection in that drill chuck and then it's just a matter of grabbing a screwdriver of some sort Pull on the other side um, and pull it nice and tight so you make sure that both of these wires are going to stay parallel there and then just twist it up. And I'm twisting this clockwise so you can, you can do it either direction, doesn't matter. And as you go, just try to keep this wire uh, as straight as possible in that drill check. If you get an angle on it, it's more likely to break off prematurely. All I'm going to do here is allow this wire to contract as I twist it. And it's going to get to a certain point where it's not going to contract anymore. I'm going to keep going, and this should break off right there. Or the chuck of the drill. doesn't matter, but we'll see. So it broke off at the chuck of the drill. So all I'm gonna do is take this wire, I'm gonna cut that loop off. I'm gonna take these wires out of the drill. And I'm gonna stick back the part that I just cut off. So whichever part breaks off um, first, you wanna flip it around and stick the opposite side into the drill. Uh, we're just going to get as tight of a twist as possible. Tighten it down nice and tight. And I'm going to twist it one more time. And this is just to ensure that we get a nice even twist. Wrong way. And broke off one more time. So now it's definitely twisted up um, to the absolute maximum. And let's move on to the next one. Okay, I've got another one here in the drill and I'm just gonna do the exact same thing. Flip it off, put it back in, so on the wire whichever side didn't break, um, or just flip it around and twist it up some more. Okay, and I'll show you a macro shot of these two wires, and then we're going to reverse twist those. Okay, and you should be looking at something like this when you're finished twisting them up. Uh, really even twists all throughout, and that's what you get from switching, flipping the wire around, and continuing to twist it again after it breaks off. Uh, you should end up with really uniform pieces of wire. Okay, and then all you do is you take both of those twisted pieces and stick them into the drill chuck the same exact way. Um, that you did originally when you're twisting up those round wires. Tighten down, check to make sure they're really in there, and then I'm going to grab some pliers and grab onto these two pieces, pull them as parallel as possible, and then grab onto the end of these two pieces. 
Now it doesn't matter which way you twist this originally, but make sure that when you're twisting both of these together, you twist them the opposite direction than you did uh, the first time. So I originally twisted them clockwise, I'm going to twist them counterclockwise. And make sure you have a good fit also here. I'm going to go ahead and just start over there. So what you can do is once you grab these with the pliers, you can make sure by pulling on them like that, that they're really in there. And then pull again, make sure that it's nice and parallel on both sides. And then twist it up. And just like before, you want to let it contract, but you definitely want to hold a lot of pressure here too. Uh, you don't want it to kink up, because it will if you let it. You can already see it opening up right here, just like the chain coil. And eventually the rest of the wire starts to uh, create that same pattern. Now in a chain coil, normally you would stop right about here, um, if not even sooner. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get a macro shot uh, to show you the uh, alignment that this wire is going to take at the end. Okay, so you get to this point and then you're just going to keep going a little bit. Hopefully we can catch this on video. So at this point it starts aligning up. It's about to the max here. Let me move along the wire and see if we can't get the some better shots of this. So that's the basic shape. Uh, it doesn't seem to be wanting to cooperate so much in macro mode, uh, probably just because the angle that I'm holding it at. But this is the basic concept. At a certain point, it starts uh, untwisting and giving that triangle shape to it. And there's a triangle. All right, so that's what we're looking for. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next part. Okay, so making these build videos, uh, at this point I always just wonder why I'm doing it at all. <laughs> because while trying to get that macro shot of those wires twisting, I it just wasn't cooperating. But uh, eventually I got um, quite a few usable pieces twisted up. So if your wire ends up looking like this, I mean, you're gonna have to do it again. Uh, that's probably not really usable. We could try to wrap something up real quick just to see how it turns out. I could be wrong. Well, actually, that doesn't look too bad. You could probably still use it if you end up with a scribbly little piece of wire. Um, I'm not going to use that piece though, or this one. And so basically you just keep twisting it until all the little grooves align and you end up with something that's triangular in shape. And so I'm going to grab some of these, I'm going to save for the next part of the video where we flatten them out. And then these ones here, they're not perfect, but I'm going to roll with it. Um, just to do the regular chain coil V2. So you just grab it, and the way I found this best to wrap is that if you have that triangle shape right, what you want to do is get that flat part of the triangle 
against the screwdriver and just start wrapping it around. And there's not a huge amount of springiness to this wire, but it is really uh, stiff. So it takes some force and you want to get it as evenly tensioned as you can while you're wrapping this around. And I'm going to do five wraps. And the way it should look when you're finished is that all of those little grooves um, are standing up on end. And so you have all that juice contact on the inside of this coil. So I'm going to do that to the other piece of wire here, and then we'll go ahead and take a look at it. Okay, I'm going to be throwing this on the Dark Horse RDA by... I bought it from bvapehappy.com. <clears throat> It has these really big post holes, which is super convenient for this build since these wires do get pretty thick. Um, you need about two millimeter post holes uh, in order to fit that in here. And I just got this on an unregulated box mod that I got from Angel Sigs. It's the Angel Sigs uh, box. And on the dark horse, you got to get it really close to those posts, uh, or else the top cap comes down and hits your coil when you're trying to mount it. So I'm just going to get it as close as I can there. And it's okay if it's touching the post at this point, because I can adjust it after tightening it down. You want to get it nice and tight on these kinds of twisted wires just to get a good connection to make sure that it crimps that wire down completely. Alright, let me just get this down too because I'm crazy. Right, I'm going to clip off those back portions. And kind of adjust this guy. So it tightens down pretty nicely, uh, and it lines up pretty well. The way to get it to line up, the best way is to just use a lot of consistent pressure when you're wrapping that coil in the first place. And when you dry, when you start firing this guy up, it's going to act like most twisted builds, where it's shorting out within itself and stuff. So make sure you got really good batteries. Again, that's why I like to use these parallel mo box mods. Um, since it splits the amp draw between both batteries. And there we go. Looking a lot better. That's pretty good. And I'm going to double check, make sure that the top cap fits. Hitting. It looks like it probably is here. And the way I check on the dark horse to make sure the top cap's fitting is I just take off that AFC ring and stick this guy on and then rotate it around, make sure it's not catching. And so that looks good. Go ahead and wick it up. Okay, so I got some organic Japanese cotton and I'm just going to fold it over on itself so that most uniform part is on the outside just twist it up and slide it on through and for me with wicking everybody has their own way of doing it I just do it so that you can't just pull it out but if you want to pull it you can so that just ensures that it's making really good contact uh, with all the inside of that wick. I'm just going to cut this guy off here. And this one right about there. Tuck it in. I'm going to ohm it out and take a vape on it. 
Okay, so uh, it's omen out right at 0.27, so a duel is going to be like 0 0.14, 0 0.15, between 0 0.14 and 0 0.16. Really depends on how your how tight the wraps are and what inner diameter you're using, etc. And this box, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't really recommend it. I got it on angelsigs.com. Um, if you do builds like above 0.3, I don't think it would cause an issue, but this button definitely gets hot with some of my builds. Um, but a fully mechanical box mount, I couldn't really pass up. All right, so 0.27 ohms. Put some fresh batteries in here. Do a little performance just before we go to the next part of the video. And again, um, if you don't have an ultrasonic cleaner, I would just stop right here and not even go on to the next part just because I really don't feel you can get the wire clean enough um, to make it an okay vape. But yeah, this heats up right away. I mean, it's good vape. It's on a single coil, so. All right. Hope you enjoyed the chain coil, and I'll get on to making the interlock coil. So to make the interlock wire, <clears throat> you just take your chain coil V2 right here, uh, this triangle-shaped wire, and all we're going to do is just flatten that with toothless pliers, just like spiral wire. And this process takes a really long time, so um, I'm not going to show the entire process. I'll probably cut out a lot of the twisting, but all I do is I get some juice, and I actually just uh, get this whole wire uh, covered in it really nicely. Just because you're going to be slipping around uh, that wire with the pliers, and then I actually lube the pliers up as well. That just helps it uh, go. And I like to use some earplugs or ear protection as well, uh, just because of the length of time that I'm going to be drilling. If you have a quieter drill, you're not going to need to worry about it. But uh, my drill gets pretty loud. It's one of the cheap ones. I think it was like 30 bucks or something. And they didn't have uh, making it quiet really in mind when they designed it. So uh, just make sure you're going in the same direction that you reverse twisted those wires together. So the last direction that you twisted it, is this the direction that you're going to be wanting to do this guy. And the first time you go over it, just go over it really lightly. So if you had some unevenness in the wire initially, um, by going over it lightly a few times like this, it actually pulls a lot of that unevenness out, and you can usually get quite a few of the kinks out um, that you had in that original twist. So if you didn't have it perfect from the start, uh, just go ahead and just try smoothing it out with the pliers really gently to start, and you can usually get a lot of those out. It takes a long time, but once you start uh, getting it flat enough, it'll go smoother and smoother. And towards the end, it'll just uh, act almost like spiral wire. And you will, you'll get to a point eventually where this part of the wire uh, is flattened really well. But then the outside, or the end of the wire, isn't flattened as well. And the reason for that is that... Um, the farther away you get from the chuck of that drill, the more twists in this wire it's going to take to have enough tension to pull this through those pliers. So what you can do is, once you have this part and you think you've got it to a pretty much a nice flat, um, a nice flat, uh, whatever that word is, state or whatever, 
uh, you can flip it around in the drill and that way you have the increased tension um, over on the other end of the wire where it needs to be twisted up more. And just keep going. And if it breaks off, just take the little broken chunk out of the drill and keep going. The entire process should take at least 20 minutes, so. <laughs> You'll see all the metal shavings uh, it's inside of that juice right now and so that's why it's really important to have an ultrasonic cleaner I can't stress that enough And that looks like it's flat enough. Okay. And this is the interlock wire finished. And all I did was I went and I washed it with soap and water. And in some of these spots you'll be able to see why you're going to need an ultrasonic cleaner. Because there's still those little in between those grooves you'll see those little uneven portions of metal um, and so I'm sure there's little specks of metal hiding in those uh, that need to be shaken out um, with an ultrasonic cleaner so if you insist on doing it without one I mean do it at your own risk but uh, I'm not comfortable with it personally so but yeah, this is pretty much what interlock wires are uh, going to be looking like. And the reason I went with interlock wires is just because uh, each little section of this looks like a separate uh, piece of stuff, like interlocked together. Like they look like separate pieces all stuck together. Um, and it creates these really cool juice channels down along the inside of that wire. And I've been really impressed with the performance so far. So uh, let's coil it up, ohm it out, and vape it a little bit. And after finishing the flattening process and washing it once uh, with dish soap and water uh, real thoroughly, what I'll then do is go ahead and wrap the coil up. And it doesn't really matter which direction you start this, um, because as you wrap it, it's going to get pulled into shape, because you're going to have to use a lot of force since this wire is so stiff. Um, the way I like to start it is with that, if you can imagine that triangle shape um, with a pointy side down towards the screwdriver is the way that I like to get it started. You just have a lot of force as you turn it around. And there's not a lot of forgiveness with this stuff if you uh, don't wrap it correctly the first time, so try to keep it really even as you go and just allow that wire to take whatever shape that it wants to six reps on there. You can see there's an unevenness here. So I'm going to see if I can't put one more wrap on this other side. If there's enough room for it. And then what I'll do is actually flip it back around. And I'm going to pull one of these guys off. One, 
two, three, four, five, six. Just need to make it a five rep, so I'm gonna pull one more off. All right, once you have the coil like this, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna uh, drop that right into the ultrasonic cleaner. Put it in the little plastic dish. And the reason why I use these uh, now, like you might think like, oh, the soap definitely does a good job of cleaning it. But each time I do this, there's always um, some like really fine dust particles uh, at the bottom of the ultrasonic cleaner when I'm finished. So I'm just gonna drop it in there. And I just have warm water in there. I'm gonna run a few cycles, a total of about uh, 10 minutes or so in the ultrasonic cleaner. So we got it down in the ultrasonic cleaner and you'll see how it shakes and gets all this stuff out. All right, and I just want to show you some of the uh, particles that I was talking about. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but right here there's a collection of particles. You saw how they dispersed there? Over here, there's another collection of particles. Um, so there's definitely stuff coming off of this coil uh, after I had already washed it with soap and water for pretty thoroughly there. Um, and so that's what I'm talking about. I mean, each everybody has their own comfort level as to what they're willing to vape, but I think it's an unnecessary uh, risk with this build. Um, I'll kind of go into more detail here. Went ahead and gutted the other build out of the dark horse, and we're just going to mount it in there. Let's stick that part through. And just like the uh, chain coil V2, just get it really close to those posts. Um, tighten the negative post down. See how it's lining up. And you can tighten it up a little bit um, before tightening down that positive post. Go ahead and clip this back part off. And get the hot spots out just the same exact way. You just want to pulse it real quickly. If you just hold it down, it'll melt down and all that work will just disappear. <laughs> all right. And I'm just going to pinch this together up top a little bit. It takes a little longer to get the hot spots out. There we go. Looking good. Let this cool down and I'll wick it up.
juice it out. See a little performance. And let's ohm it out and I'll vape it. Okay, so I'm gonna ohm this out. And it should be slightly higher ohms. Yep, 0 0.29 ohms. Uh, probably just because some of that outer diameter of that wire uh, gets removed as you're doing the flattening process. Um, so this one's going to be right around the same ohm range, though, as the chain coil V2. So, get some performance here. And, I mean, some people are going to ask, you know, why would you make a build video for something that requires an ultrasonic cleaner, which most people don't have. And the reason is because, I mean, as soon as I posted the pictures on Instagram, uh, there's already a lot of people trying it. So, um, you know, I just want to show the safest way possible to do it since people are going to be doing this build anyway so um, that's my thought on it at least <laughs> got me I like it. It's a nice little coil. So that's about it. Um, vape as safe as possible. And then also, if someone's still watching, uh, do the uh, see if you can do that hashtag um, with some different combinations of smaller gauges of wire or something. I'm pretty exhausted at this point from doing this build video, uh, but that'd be awesome if we could get that going. So, uh, thanks for watching, and until um, next time.